Hello, just a quick mostly unscripted uh, video today and it's to answer a question that somebody asked about my previous video which was the one about the Commodore 128, the Copper Dragon board and the RGB to HDMI. And the question was, if you want to use both the 40 and the 80 column displays, do you need two RGB to HDMIs? And the short answer is yes, at least if you want to see them both at the same time. Um, so for example here I've got my 128 with uh, an RGB to HDMI fed off the 80 column VDC output onto this screen and I can throw up a disk directory. Um, to see the 40 column VIC output though I've got the Copper Dragon board feeding into this RGB to HDMI which is the one in my previous video onto this screen. I can swap between the two displays with Escape X and there we go. Uh, and obviously this is the best uh, scenario because I can see both monitors at the same time and I can see everything that's going on. Um, but if I only had one RGB to HDMI, would I be able to move it between the two um, outputs? And the short answer is yes, um, but it's quite complicated. Um, and this is one of the things about the RGB to HDMI is uh, moving it between different systems. How easy that is depends on the uh, different systems involved and whether they need the analog board, whether they need the CPLD reprogramming, whether you need to change the cable. Uh, and all that kind of thing. So let me give you an example. Um, so the one that's currently connected to my 40 column VIC output um, with the Copper Dragon board in, that has an analog board and the YUV CPLD firmware in it. Now if I want to move that onto my ZX81, all I need to do is change the cable coming out for this one here that has an RCA connector that plugs into the composite output on my ZX81 that I did in an earlier video. I then just change the profile through the menu to ZX81 and that's fine, it just switches over and it remembers all the settings that I changed for the ZX81 at that point. Um, so that's easy. Um, but if I want to change it, say, to run on the BBC, you can actually do that on the analog board. Um, and to do that, you'll need this cable here that has a DIN connector for the BBC's RGB output. That plugs into the end of the analog board. Um, but to switch it to the BBC, I've got to reprogram the CPLD for the BBC version, and that's a special version that understands the timings on the teletext mode on the BBC. Um, and that takes sort of 10 or 20 seconds when you want to swap it, so it's obviously not a big problem, and unless you're moving it constantly between two machines, that, that should be acceptable. The RGB to HDMI does remember the profile that you selected for each different CPLD version. So when you swap it to the YUV one, it will remember that it was on the Commodore 64, so it swaps back to the work with the 128. And when you swap it to the BBC CPLD, it will remember it was on a BBC, so you won't have to keep choosing the different profiles. Um, the BBC CPLD, by the way, does support some other computers as well, so it's not it does sound a bit strange that you have to select the BBC, but it, there is different versions of the BBC and different computers that it supports. Um, so that's a bit of a pain, but it's not really a big problem. But if I wanted to move this onto the 80 column output, that would be uh, a bit more complicated because the 80 column one doesn't need the analog board and you have to feed this cable in, plus you've got to swap the um, CPLD from the RGB one for the 80 column output to the YUV one for the 40 column output. So that would be quite complicated. So let me just try and show you that a bit better with this third one I've got here. Um, so this one here is for a BBC um, and it has no analog board, it just has the RGB to HDMI hat and the Pi Zero at the bottom um, and then this cable plugged in there that has the BBC DIN connector on. Um, so obviously if I wanted to swap that to the 80 column output which doesn't need the analog board, I would have to remove the um, RGB to HDMI hat, change the cable for the one with the DB9 to go into the 80 column VDC output, I'd then have to obviously put it back together again then I'd have to change the CPLD from the BBC one to the RGB one. That would only take 10 or 20 seconds uh, to reprogram, but obviously moving it backwards and forwards would be a bit of a pain because I had to keep taking it apart to change this little cable. Um, now if I was then going to swap it between the 80 column VDC output and the 40 column VIC output, that would be a little bit more complicated again because I'd have to, if, for the, if I started with the 80 column output, I'd have to take the hat off, um, disconnect the 80 column cable that would be plugged in, in there, like this one is, and then fit in the analog board that I showed in the previous video, and then sandwich it all back together. Then once it's back together, I can plug in the cable for the Copper Dragon board, power it up, reprogram the CPLD to the YUV version instead of the RGB version. Um, so that's gonna take me a few minutes every time I swap it, and obviously there's a risk I'm gonna break something. Um, so, and obviously if I wanna swap it back, I've got to reverse that whole operation, so it's a bit complicated. Um, so, Obviously moving this between different systems really depends on what those systems are. So moving 
this one between my 128 and my ZX81 is relatively easy, it's just a menu change and plug a new cable in. When I was swapping this one to my BBC, um, then it involved changing the cable and it involved reprogramming the CPLD. Not a big problem because I don't tend to move it you know, back and forth constantly. I might move it across once or twice when I'm trying to just swap between the two machines, but I'm not doing that like multiple times in an evening. Um, but it was enough to you know, just mean it's a little bit awkward having to keep unplug it all and move it around. So when I had the option of getting a third one of these recently, I, I jumped at that because uh, I can leave this one attached to my BBC all the time with the BBC CPLD and this cable. And then obviously I can just move this one between the Commodore 128 and the ZX81, which is um, relatively easy. It's just a menu change in a, a cable. Um, so the thing to bear in mind, of course, that, that does seem complicated, but to bear in mind this is a, a hobby project and it's uh, not, not my hobby project, I should say, um, obviously, um, but it is a, it's a hobby project and the emphasis is on making this as, uh, as you know, work as well as possible and as cheaply as possible, um, but, but working well. And that's what the emphasis is on. Obviously, if you were trying to package it up and sell it, something like the Frame Meister over here, you might put it in a box of multiple inputs and some menus to select them. But then probably most of your money would go on all that sort of logic that's handling all the different inputs and the selections and the menus and all that kind of thing. Whereas here, all your money is going into the RGB to HDMI itself. And so the, the, the easy solution to this problem is just to buy more RGB to HDMIs. And, and that's why I've got three of them, because they're well, they're like bicycles and kayaks. That uh, the correct number to own is one more than the, you already have. Um, so, in my case, when I bought these, um, these the RGB to HDMI when they are available, typically with a cable, cost about thirty pounds. Um, the analog board is another sort of twenty-five pounds on top of that. So obviously, you've then got to add a Pi Zero, which is under a tenner SD card. You know, a case which is a few quid, and maybe you need a power supply. Certainly, the the BBC doesn't need one because it gives out five volts through the DIN connector. But the Commodore One Two Eight needs one on each of the inputs. But that's just a, obviously a micro USB. Um, so. I think, yeah, the, the short answer is to buy more of them. Um, it's just a shame that you can't buy more of them. Um, I think that, uh, that David Banks, who started this, and Ian Bradbury, who's worked on it subsequently and added all the support for different machines, they've done an absolutely excellent job and they've concentrated on where it needs to be. Um, if you could buy more of these, um, that would solve the problem. You just, just buy lots of them, plug them all in, and everything's good, and that's what I'm lucky enough to be able to do. Um, but obviously, if you're short of them, um, you will have to keep reprogramming them, changing the boards and the cables, and, and obviously that's a, a little bit a bit of a pain. Um, anyway, I hope that clears up the uh, answer to that question and answers a few other things you may have thought of. Um, so I hope that was interesting, and uh, see you next time.